Okay, class, this is basically going to be a um, review lecture on some of the different functional groups for infrared spectroscopy. It's not exactly what I did in class. Uh, I'm redoing it because um, hopefully it'll be slightly shorter and perhaps more concise and better. All right. So the first group we're going to look at are alcohols and phenols. So much like the, the carbonyl group, um, the alcohol or the hydroxyl group is one of the most obvious peaks in the infrared spectrum. It's got a polar polarized OH bond. And remember, in infrared spectroscopy, a change in dipole moment in the bond in the, when the bond vibrates makes it uh, very strong uh, absorption. So these OH stretches um, are very broad. So it depends upon, like, well, I'll show a graphic in a minute uh, comparing a free, o, free OH stretch versus a hydrogen bonded stretch. But because most of the samples which we do are neat, it's more often than not, you'll see these very broad peaks and they're above 3,300 wave numbers. You can't miss them because they are just so large, big, deep valleys, OH stretches, just to the left of the CH stretches. Can't miss them. Obvious peak. Um, the other part of the functional group, which would be important, is the carbon-oxygen bond. Now, this bond's also polarized. This stretch is um, in the range of 1,200 to 1,000, so down in this area. Now, often there's other peaks down here, so these peaks, you can look there for confirmation once you find this large. This one you're never gonna miss when it's there. Um, the CH, the COH band is, a, is often obscured, so it's not particularly useful. Um, it's really this large, deep peak at around 3,300 wave numbers. So that's for this, this example here is just a straight, this is for uh, hexanol, one hexanol looks like. Um, the interesting, actually, I, I should go back on this. The CH, the CO stretch in this range here, if you look on your correlation table, often if you find this correctly, you can distinguish between primary, secondary, and tertiary alcohols. So just keep that in mind when, you're, when you've got a number of different structure, uh, constitutional isomers of alcohols that you can make. Maybe these stretches will be helpful to you. All right. Here's another example of uh, the two butanol big OH stretch above 33, around 3,300 wave numbers. CO stretch, you notice that this peak is quite broad itself because of the, um, the polarized bond. And uh, the rest of these stretches here are all basically for the alkanes and here's the all below 3,000 CH stretches. Now, when it comes to the phenol, so phenol is a, is a hydroxyl group attached to an aromatic ring. Um, all of the stuff we learned about the aromatic ring itself, don't forget that. So um, the CH stretch above around 3,100 for the aromatic CHs, you, we can find the aromatic carbon-carbon double bonds. So keep all of those sort of things in mind. And then the substitution patterns for the outer plane bends. So the, all the aromatic stuff you have to keep in mind. The OH stretch, this is again a broad peak around 3,300. So it's a combination of the two functional groups. Excellent. 
Now, this is the part at the very, from the very first. Um, so when the OH bond is hydrogen bonded to other hydroxyl groups, you get this deep, strong absorption. When you start to dilute your sample, a very sharp peak starts to emerge, and this corresponds to the free hydroxyl peak. So there, it's not hydrogen bonded to any solvent or the molecule itself. And so the, this is basically a neat sample, like this would be an NH, NACL disc. Um, but if you're using a solution cell and you started to, and you had chloroform as your solvent, and in sample B you've got some of the sample bond, hydrogen bonded to each other. Other molecules are completely solvated, so you start to see this free OH peak. In a very dilute sample, so part C, so in this case, your sample is completely solvated by um, carbon tet, so there's no hydrogen bonding between this OH and another OH, and you get a sharp peak. But by and large, most of the examples you'll see will be will be A, where it's basically a thin film where it's completely hydrogen bonded. All right, so the next functional group, um, which has carbon oxygen bonds would be the ether. So ethers, um, so carbon-carbon double bonds, of course there's a degree of unsaturation there and the carbonyl is a very obvious peak. Alcohols, so you got OH bond, the hydroxyl group is a very obvious peak. In the case of ethers, You've got neither of these. You're basically relying on a carbon oxygen stretch. So they come out between 1300 and 1000 wave numbers. So in this region of the spectra here, this peak is broad, but unlike the carbonyl, which isn't an area by itself, this one can be obscured by other things. So you have to keep that in mind. So this is, uh, here's an ether. This, you know you've got oxygen in your formula. Let's pretend that uh, there's no double bond equivalents and you see no hydrox, no OH stretch over here, then the functional group you're left with is an ether. So you can go and look for that. Look for this CO stretch. Um, now phenyl ethers, these are oxygen, so aromatic oxygen, alkyl group. This will be a combination of basically your ether plus your aromatic. Um, one of the interesting things though is that you get two distinct oxygen carbon stretches. Um, and you can think of this from the fact that you've got an oxygen bonded to an sp2 hybridized carbon and an oxygen bonded to say a sp3 hybridized carbon. Um, let's see if I can draw some resonant structures here. Draw. Another thing which is interesting, so let's just draw out a, this compound here. So oxygen, carbon, oxygen, carbon. Remember, lone pair in the benz benzoic position, these electrons can be delocalized into the aromatic ring. And what happens here is that if we were to draw this out, you will notice that if the true structure is, uh, is basically a, 
It's a hybrid of these two resonance structures. There's a couple other resonance structures where these electrons are delocalized throughout the ring. But you notice that in this case here, this oxygen's double bonded to this carbon. So through resonance, you are increasing the double bond character of this bond. So that is basically increasing the force constant. And so on the, and on the other side, the same thing isn't, isn't happening. So this is why you can get two of these stretching vibrations, one of them higher than the other, basically based upon the fact that there's resonance structures which increase the force constant or the bond strength. And that's gonna shift this, the vibrations to a higher frequency right here. Um, now some of the other functional groups that have got uh, carbons and oxygens, the acetal is carbon, oxygen, carbon, oxygen, carbon. Epoxides are oxygen, carbon, carbon, oxygen. So this is a three-membered ring with oxygen as part of it. Um, in vinyl ethers, these are similar to the, the phenyl ethers, but in this case, you've got a double bond next to the oxygen. So this is gonna have a lot of the same, uh, very similar in the sense that um, resonance is gonna shift this, this CO stretch to higher wave numbers because the force constant's going up much in the same way as I do it for the aromatic ring here. Um, acetals are common um, with some of the sugars. Uh, epoxides are, they are, there's lots of, uh, epoxides are basically made famous by um, Barry Sharpless, who won the Nobel Prize in Synthetic Organic Chemistry a couple, um, probably 10 years ago. Or so. Um, so we'll see. We'll see a little bit of the epoxides. Um, you'll see the acetals in organic chemistry, and uh, phenyl enol, vinyl enol ethers or enol ethers are common in synthetic chemistry. Okay, so that ends our talk about the remaining functional groups which had oxygen in them. So the alcohols, the ethers, and um, some of the specialty ones.